You love them, you hate them, you can't deny that they're strong. Today we're going over everything there is to know about Shadow Pokemon. What's up guys, so Shadow Pokemon are one of my favorite types of Pokemon. I've studied them deeply and learned a lot about them. To start of Pokemon Go, not a lot of people knew the benefits of having a Shadow, but over the years we've learned a lot more about them and how they're actually some of the best Pokemon in the game, for raids at least. Let's go over everything there is to know about Shadow Pokemon, Team Rocket in general, and this is pretty much a whole masterclass. So it might be a little long video, but uh, if you stay tuned, you'll be blessed with knowledge by the end of it. Okay, so number one, what is a shadow Pokemon? So a shadow Pokemon is pretty much a Pokemon that's been captured by Team Rocket and turned evil. They're gonna have some glowing aura around them and usually their eyes are gonna go red showing their shadow. Also under the attack, you're gonna see a little line that says shadow bonus and we're gonna get into what that means a little later. So what's the difference between a shadow Pokemon and a regular Pokemon? Let's say we have a Magikarp regular and a shadow Magikarp. The shadow Pokemons are gonna take 20% more total damage. So they're gonna be weaker and less defensive than regular Pokemon. They're also gonna do 20% more damage than regular Pokemon. So they're pretty much, their stats are gonna be different than the regular version of the Pokemon. Pretty much just turns them into a glass cannon. This bonus can be huge because it's multiplying the base stats plus the IV stats of that Pokemon. For example, a Mewtwo who has 300 base attack, it's gonna get multiplied by 1.2 to add that 20%, which is adding almost 80 attack points to the Pokemon. However, remember, it works the same with defense. So you're gonna be multiplying defense by 0.8. I have a video on all details about levels, how these stats work gonna be right up here. These Pokemon are also a little more expensive to power up because they have this feature. So this, I think it's gonna be around a 1.1 times more expensive in Stardust and in Candy. So after hearing all this, why don't you just keep Shadow Pokemon? They technically do more damage, right? Even though they're taking more damage. Well, wait, there's a caveat with Shadow Pokemon. All of them come with a move frustration. No matter if you have evolved the Pokemon or try to change this move, you can never get rid of frustration on Shadow Pokemon. This move is completely useless. I think it does zero damage. So it's pretty much making it so your Shadow Pokemon can't even attack and use this power they have. However, there's two ways around this. First of all, Niantic will release rocket events every once in a while. Right now, we don't know when the next one is going to be, but I will update you. Or during a certain period of time, you can use any type of TM and remove frustration from the Pokemon. Once you've removed frustration, it's going to be gone forever. So that shadow Pokemon will be actually usable with regular moves from that Pokemon's move pool. The second way around this is by adding a second charge move to your shadow Pokemon. And this second charge move will be from its regular move pool. So what you can see here is that shadow Pokemon are more strong, but unless you're patient with them and hold on to them until these events where you can remove frustration, then they're pretty much utterly useless for the time being. Final note, shadow Pokemon cannot mega evolve. So if you have a shadow Pokemon and you want to try to mega evolve it, that will never work. Okay, so now that we know what shadow Pokemon are, how do we get shadow Pokemon? Get shadow Pokemon from battling members of Team Go Rocket. We have three levels of Team Go Rocket members. Number one is Grunts, which are pretty much just the useless ones that you can take out really easy. Grunts will not use shields in battle, so whatever charge move you throw at them will always go through. Second level are the team leaders, Sierra, Cliff, and Arlo. We'll get into them a little later. And finally is the Rocket boss, Giovanni. There's also Jesse and James, which come all, once in a while through an event and through the Meowth Balloon. They pretty much act the exact same as Grunts. We'll talk about them in a bit soon. How do you find a Grunt? So you can find a Grunt at a Pokestop or in a Rocket Balloon. Rocket Balloons will appear above you at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. and 12 a.m. and 12 p.m. And you can click on the Rocket Balloon and battle the Grunt. At a Pokestop, the Grunts will rotate, I think, around every 30 minutes. So if you go to a Pokestop and it's spinning and acting all crazy like that, that means there is a Grunt at that Pokestop. You can then click on the Grunt once you're close enough and battle the Grunt. Battling these Grunts will usually give you the first first Pokemon from their lineup. However, there's a chance that you can get the second Pokemon. You can also tell what Pokemon you're gonna get before battling the Grunt, depending on what sentence they say. It'll be along the line of the type of the Pokemon. For example, if a Grunt says these waters are treacherous, that means you're battling a water Grunt, which is gonna give you a water shadow Pokemon. Up on screen right now, you can pause and see all the different Grunts and the rewards you can get from the Grunts and what they're gonna say. This helps out a lot if you don't want a certain shadow Pokemon. Once you defeat a Grunt, you're gonna get one mystery component. And once you get six mystery components, they're gonna combine together automatically and create a rocket radar. Once you have a radar, you can locate one of the team rocket leaders, which I mentioned before. They'll either be in the next balloon that appears for you, or you can find them at certain Pokestops. Remember, they rotate every day, so they won't be at the same Pokestop every day. Note, they're random in finding them. So if you wanna battle Sierra, your balloon could be a cliff. If you just don't battle the balloon with a cliff, it'll go away and it'll come back with a chance of being Sierra. It could be cliff again, and this goes over and over again. You can also click on the radar and it'll pretty much show you a scan of the map and you can look look for nearby Pokestops that have rocket leaders at them. Once you defeat a team rocket leader, remember these leaders will use shields, but they'll only use shields on the first two charge moves you throw. You will lose the rocket radar and you have a chance to catch their shadow Pokemon. Rocket leaders and Jesse and James are the only ones that have shiny shadow Pokemon. So if you're trying to get a shiny shadow Pokemon from a grunt, you cannot do that. Note, you cannot get more mystery components from the grunts if you already have a radar. So you have to battle a leader before you can start collecting the mystery components again. But you can also just buy radars from the shop if you want to skip battle 
battling the grunts to get a radar to battle a leader. Rocket leaders and the grunts shadow Pokemon and lineups will change, I think around every three to six months. Just keep an eye on Niantic news and usually they'll update us when they've rotated the rocket leader lineups. Finally, we have Giovanni, the pretty much the big boss of Team Rocket. Giovanni will give you pretty much the strongest shadow Pokemon in the game, usually a shadow legendary. The way you battle Giovanni is every few months, a new special research task will come out. The current one right now is inter egg testing development. You complete this research by doing all the tasks, you will get a black rocket radar or a super rocket radar. Once you have this radar, it's going to be the same as the leaders. You're pretty much going to be able to find Giovanni at a Pokestop or in a balloon. If you have it equipped and a balloon appears, it'll always be Giovanni. If you have a radar and you go to Pokestops, you might see a Giovanni, but when you click on it, it's a decoy. Giovanni at Pokestops will disguise himself as a decoy grunt. So you have to go and hunt Giovanni and look for him because it's not always going to be guaranteed Giovanni if you see him at a Pokestop. All these grunts that disguise themselves as Giovanni will have Shadow Bell Sprout. So if you're trying to get a good Shadow Victory Bell for the Great League, then don't battle Giovanni yet because you can keep that radar and keep farming off these decoy grunts. However, once you find him and you're ready to battle him, he is probably one of the toughest to take down. So search online for his lineups as they do change. Once you defeat him, you're able to catch his Shadow Legendary. Currently right now is Shadow Mewtwo, which is one of the strongest shadows in the game. Also note, if you have one of the past Giovanni researches, I think it's either called Looming in the Shadows. You can get, can get two Super Rocket Raiders and battle Giovanni twice to get sh two Shadow Mewtwo's. However, if you've already completed past researches to get one of his past Shadow Pokemon, like Shadow Entei, Shadow Suicune, or Shadow Raikou, then you can only get the current one through the inter-egg testing development research. Finally, I want to touch on purifying. So what if you don't want to wait, or what if a Pokemon is not really good in Shadow form? There's a button in the Shadow Pokemon that you can purify a Pokemon with. This will cost Stardust and Candy. What it'll do is it'll lose its Shadow form and it'll gain a purified form when you do this. These Pokemon will be cheaper to power up and evolve. They will lose their Shadow Attack bonus and their Shadow Defense drop. They'll gain two IV points in each of the stat categories, and they'll also instantly be brought to level 25 if they're under level 25. This usually makes them jump up in CP, as you've noticed when purifying Pokemon. It pretty much turns them into regular version of the Pokemon, however, they're cheaper to power up, and these Pokemon can mega evolve. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? So when do you purify and when do you keep as a shadow? Although shadow might not sound like a good option, it sometimes can be the stronger option. For raids, usually the shadow Pokemon will outclass the regular Pokemon because of the 20% bonus attack. Even though it is losing defense, it makes up for that. Also note, raid Pokemon usually will get one to two shot. No matter if it's a shadow or a regular, it'll usually won't be taking that many hits and won't make a big difference. However, for PVP, you want to check out pvppoke.com. I'm going to leave the link below. Here you can see which one is better ranked for as a leader, as a closer, and all this details and overall. Just search up the Pokemon and you're going to see the shadow versions ranking and the regular versions ranking for each of the leagues. So yeah, remember to be patient with shadow Pokemon, although they are kind of annoying to get and take a lot of time to get up and running. Once you do, you have some of the strongest Pokemon in the game. And honestly, me, myself, I don't usually recommend ever purifying other than in certain, certain situations because usually shadow Pokemon are pretty exclusively rare and you can never reverse a purification. So if you need a good Larvitar, for example, and you want to purify your shadow Larvitar, you can easily just hatch a regular Larvitar from a 10k egg and then have both. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. This is a very complicated topic. I hope you guys understand everything about it now, but I'm sure there's still questions. Yeah, that's pretty much the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys have a good, great day, honestly. Go get those shadow Pokemon. Keep them. Wait for frustration events. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.